It's time for Ask the Tech Guy. Our question today, how long can an HDMI cable be? Next. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from the LastPass studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome into uh, 2020. Ask the Tech Guy continues with a whole batch of new questions for a new year, like this one from John K. Montgomery, Texas. He says, I really like the new show, and I've got a question for him. When considering a long cable run, he's talking 50 to 100 feet for 4K video, is it better to use a fiber HDMI cable or HDMI over Cat 6, Cat 7? That's a great question. And I think it's a really important one because HDMI is technically supposed to be less than three meters. You don't want to make an HDMI cable too long. I read a study of HDMI cables, particularly addressing the issue of these very expensive HDMI cables you can buy at the video file stores and online from companies like Monster Cable, gold-plated, magically insulated cables. And <laughs> frankly, they work no better than the cheapest HDMI cables you can buy at normal distances, the kind of distance you'd have from, uh, say, your uh, Xbox to your television, just a few feet. It's when you get to longer distances that HDMI cables start to become problematic. Remember, it's digital. And the way digital works, it doesn't degrade. It either works or it doesn't. It fails if the throw is too long. You can get echoes. You can get all sorts of weird behavior, interference. And anything more than... I think it was 10 meters in this study that I read, is going to be prone to that. Generally, what I do is I don't use HDMI cables for long throws. I'll use Ethernet, and I'll use a Balin. Now, there are other ways to do HDMI over long distance. You mentioned fiber HDMI, but Balins are the least expensive way to do this. A Balin, uh, B-A-L-U-N, it's short for balanced, unbalanced, is a little doohickey and that's the technical term, a little doohickey that has HDMI on one end, so you plug your HDMI, short HDMI cable into it, and Ethernet on the other end. Then you can run a long Ethernet cable, quite long if it's an active Balin, because it'll have uh, a transmitter a amplifier in it. You can go quite long, and then there's a Balin at the other end that converts the signal that's been sent over the Ethernet cable. It's not Ethernet. It's different, but it's a signal that's been sent over that cable back into HDMI. And I've been able to do very long throws, hundreds of feet, using a Balin. That's the cheapest way to do it. You can find them, of course, at monoprice.com and a lot of other places. Uh, that's my general recommendation. Uh, I imagine 4K. I've not used it for 4K, but if the HDMI cable you're using and the TV and the device support 4K, I can't imagine why it wouldn't work. There's plenty of carrying capacity on that Ethernet cable. So that would be my recommendation. It's an electrical device that technically converts from a balanced signal to an unbalanced signal. That's why it's called B-A-L-U-N. And I don't know if technically these HDMI to Ethernet devices are really balanced, but but that's what they call them and, and that's what they do. And that's what I'd recommend. John, I really am glad you watched the show. I hope you keep watching it. I hope you all keep watching it. And do me a favor and subscribe, if you will. You can go to your favorite podcast application, search for Ask the Tech Guy, press the subscribe button. You'll get it automatically every Monday when the show is published, and you won't ever have to think about it. Plus, it helps us because then those apps, Pocket Casts or, or Overcast or Stitcher or Slacker or Apple's Podcast or Google's Podcast, is more likely to feature us, and, and that really helps us with download numbers. We want the show to go on, so your help is much appreciated. We also appreciate the help of our sponsor, LastPass. It's a personal password manager and identity solution for business that helps secure everywhere you work and live. You can share passwords or notes within LastPass to employees, to family members. We even have groups. You could put personal and corporate credit cards in there. I trust LastPass so much I keep my passport images in there. Now LastPass offers passwordless login options for business for employees. It's really great, both for productivity and security. LastPass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's LastPass.com slash 
twit. Thanks for joining me on Ask the Tech Guy for the brand new 2020 year. If you have a question, just ask. Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv. We'll see you next time. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.